Welcome to another video coverage of This Week on Rails. I'm Dave Kumira, and today we have Wojtek bringing us the updates, so let's dive right in. And for the first item, Rails 7.0.4.2 and 6.1.7.2 has been released. And this update was a bug fix to the previous release, where if you had a one or two letter TLD subdomain, and if you were using the domain all in the cookies, then a bug was introduced, and this is simply just addressing that bug. And for the next item, allow use of SSL terminating reverse proxy that doesn't set headers. And I'm really excited about this one because this is one that I had struggled with for many years, and I'm so glad to see this making it in. And essentially, the assume SSL middleware will allow you to set the configuration with the config.assume underscore SSL. And if you have a situation where you have a reverse proxy, or if you're doing the SSL termination at your load balancer, not the application, and if you had the force SSL set to true, then you would get a infinite redirect where it just wasn't working properly with the setting of SSL because your load balancer would have the SSL termination, but the application was getting forwarded to port 80 or something like that. And so this middleware will make the server assume that the proxy has already terminated the SSL and that the request really is HTTPS instead of what normally comes over from the load balancer to the actual application as port 80 or unencrypted. And the next one's pretty cool because I've been in this situation as well where something weird was happening on the server side and I needed to get some logs and more information about what was going on to correctly diagnose the issue. And if we had our log level set to debug, then it was almost impossible to get the full stack trace of everything that we needed to really just diagnose what the problem was. And in order to get around that, we would have to change the log level, redeploy or restart the server, and then we would be able to see what's going on. So instead, now if you use the Rails log level environment variable, and if you have that set in your production mode for the logger level, then you can switch it to debug mode or to just info much easier. So if we have a look at this change and under the files change of the pull request, before you would have something like a config log level is equal to info, but now if you set it to an environment variable where you're fetching the Rails log level, and if that doesn't exist, then it defaults to info. So you're not getting any change in functionality here. If you then switch your environment by changing the Rails log level to debug or something like that, then the application will pick that up and then you'll start getting the debug log levels instead of the info. And next, make raise on missing translations, raise on any missing translations. And before, if you're using internationalization, you wouldn't get an error if you're doing something maybe in a class or a plain old Ruby object or a module, where if you were using the internationalization within a view or a controller, then it would raise a missing key error. So now it's going to raise it regardless of where you are in your application. So do make sure that you do have all your translations if you are using those in your application. And with that, you need to make sure that you're not missing any of the keys because you may be introducing some bugs that were already present in your application that you just didn't know about where you had some missing keys. And now you would actually get errors instead of just a bad translation. And for the next one, Active Records Explain method now accepts option. And we're gonna have to look at the pull request to really see what has changed here. So the explain method on an active record query or relation is essentially going to give you a more detailed explanation of what's going on on the database side, but sometimes it's not enough information. So as the example given here, after you do your query, you can do an explain, and then you can pass in some things like analyze or verbose. And I think that you can get a bigger picture of what's possible with this in the tests on the pull request. And it looks like you have analyzed, extended, as some additional options as well. And I haven't tested this out to see what it's going to return, but any kind of debugging tools that's going to give us better insight of what's going on in the background in our database is a great thing. And last, we have an update to Active Text Tricks dependency, and that's moving it from version 1.3 to version 2.0. And looking at the release change logs, there's been quite a bit of updates that's been made to Trix in version 2.0 from version 1.3. So definitely check this out and make sure that you test your application, 
to ensure that any kind of customizations that you've done to tricks, either adding buttons with the stimulus controller or something like that, hasn't broken with this release. Over the past week, there were 24 contributors helping make the Rails framework better. So I really appreciate everyone who has contributed to Rails and making it a better framework. So again, thank you very much for all your efforts and your contribution. And if you would like to receive your own email copy of This Week in Rails, you can go to world.hey.com forward slash this.week.in.rails. And again, I simply provide the video coverage of this newsletter, but you can sign up to receive your own copy of it. And that's all for this week's video coverage of This Week in Rails. Thanks for watching.